What is the Scottish Highland known for? Whiskey, you say? Haggis, bagpipes, or kilts? Nah, gin, rowan berries, and apples, of course. The Scottish distillery, Belmanach Distillery, was the first Scottish malt whiskey distillery to embrace gin and let the local botanicals shine through with the release of the Karoon Gin in 2009. And what a tremendous success it has been. Let's check them out. Hi guys, and welcome to High on Gin. Not long ago, one of my friends saw the Scottish Karoon Gin in a store at a very good price and asked me about it. Not only is it often found at a very good price, it is also a gin that makes one hell of a gin and tonic with a slice of apple, and apples are so much in season right now. So, after I had this little talk, uh, with him about this very cool gin, I really felt that I wanted to share some of the info I have about this gin uh, with you guys. So let's get started. As I said at the beginning, uh, Karoon gin is something as unusual as a Scottish Highland gin made at a whiskey distillery and launched even before gin became as popular as it is today. And this, well, we can call it Unusual gin starts with the use of a rather unusual apparatus when it is made. You see, Karoon uses the unique copper berry chamber to produce their gin. This very unique piece of equipment was made in the US back in the 1920s. And this type of apparatus was, well, it was originally made for making perfumes. Here, the, all the botanicals are spread on four perforated trays through which the grain spirit vapors passes. The vapors is gently picking up all these fine flavors from the botanicals and turning it into a flavorful vapor before it hits the condenser and it is then liquefied. And this process is then repeated, turning the spirit with the now botanical flavors in it into vapors again, and then it all passes uh, past the botanicals on the four trays one more time. The process takes about four hours to make a high strength version of the gin that is then reduced with the cleanest Scottish water uh, at a bottle strength between 41.8% to 54% ABV, depending on what uh, gin they're making. And today the distillery does four different versions of the Karoon Gin. There's a classic gin with a white label, and then there is the latest one, uh, the Scottish Raspberry Gin with the red label, both of them at an ABV at 41.8%. Uh, and then there is this one here, the Gin Master's Cut with the gold label at 48% ABV, made for the travel retail consumers. And then lastly, there's this one here with the blue label, the Highland Strength, that is a 54% ABV version of the classic Karoon Gin. Today I will taste this one here, the classic version. The gins are made with six you can call them very classic botanicals to start with. Botanicals like juniper, coriander seed, angelica, lemon peel, orange peel, and cassia bark. Something that you will find everywhere. A very super classic and well-founded and citrus fresh foundation. And then the distillery simply step outside the distillery and pick the five local botanicals used in the gin. First and foremost, there is the rowan berries. In Gaelic, the word for rowan berries is karoon. The little red and quite a bit of berry gives the gin its character and helps define the gin in, with, this, uh, with its uh, very fine sharpness. Then they use heather that adds a light, sweet and slightly perfumed undertone. Uh, dandelion adds a unique aromatic freshness and sharpness to the gin. Uh, buck myrtle that is often used in schnapps, at least here in the Nordics, adds some additional resinous sweetness. and then. Lastly, but not least, the cool blush apple that is the most northernly uh, grown apple in the UK that adds this super delicious apple freshness to the gin. And when we smell it, oh, this 
rich and aromatic, or earthy aromatics. You know, the fine, defined piney notes. And then you have this sweet citrus or lemon sherbet smell that really makes the gin both a very light and very balanced gin. Mm. And when we taste it, to start with, you have this very pleasant feel in your mouth. And then the citrus lemon sherbet is definitely there with this very floral touch to it. And then the gin really shows even more character when the more woody and earthy flavor shows themselves together with a more bitter rowan berry. Super elegant, very complex, but still very light and inviting gin. It has this pretty long aftertaste. I, I really didn't expect it to be that long. Mm. And apples are the key words when serving this gin. You can go very classic, like a gin and tonic, and serve it uh, with a sweeter Mediterranean tonic and slices of fresh red apples. Or you can do the same gin and tonic, but also add two and a half centiliters of fresh, unfiltered apple juice and really just boost the apple sweetness. It almost becomes like a cocktail. But if you do that, I think that you should add a little piece of lemon zest to really balance the acidity from the fresh apple slices. So guys, there you have it. If you love apples and if you love a fresh, light and inviting gin and tonic, this one is for you. And it won't drain your bank account completely, but it will give you and your guests a huge smile on the face. And it doesn't matter whether you are the type that really likes the more classic kind of gins or you're the type that like the lighter and more floral kind of gins, because this one really is a crowd pleaser. Until next time.